Well, good morning. Welcome uh, to the Psalm of the Day. I, I got one more uh, time here I need to fill in for Jim. So let's go ahead and turn in our Bibles to Psalm 72. Psalm 72. This is a psalm of Solomon, it says here. But it's actually, in reality, uh, a psalm for Solomon. David is uh, writing this on really kind of a prayer for his son and uh, as he becomes king. So as this uh, tractor drives by, I will uh, begin. Psalm 72. Give the king your judgments, O God, and your righteousness to the king's son. He will judge your people with righteousness and your poor with justice. The mountains will bring peace to the people and the little hills by righteousness. He shall bring justice to the poor of the people. He will save the children of the needy and will break in pieces the oppressor. It's neat because here... David is really saying and acknowledging that it's the righteousness of God that is really needed for a king to rule. He needs to rule in righteousness, but, he, and, and, but yet he needs to rule in justice and doing the right thing. And here uh, David is uh, acknowledging that. And, and so he says, in, but something kind of shifts as he's... Uh, writing this down it's it's going to become more than just his son solomon but really the it will transition into a son that was promised to him back in second samuel uh chapter seven where god uh promise him promises him that uh he will establish the throne of his kingdom forever i will be his father and he shall be my son this is speaking of none other than Jesus. And I believe this psalm now will transition in from just a, uh, a desire for his son to do well and to rule properly into acknowledging and looking forward to that day in the millennial reign, in the kingdom age, where Jesus rules and reigns. So let's continue in verse 5. They shall fear you as long as the sun and the moon endure throughout all generations. He shall come down like rain upon the grass before mowing, like showers that water the earth. This, this king, this Messiah who will reign, will be beneficial to all the earth, like rain coming down upon the earth. Verse 7, in his days the righteous shall flourish and abundance of peace until the moon is no more. So he will not only bring, he will... Uh, uh, bring this freshness this this life within water but he will um the righteous will benefit in this kingdom and there will be peace in this kingdom uh, and he shall verse eight have dominion from sea to sea from the river to the ends of the earth he's talking about the euphrates river and that's always this uh, boundary that god had given israel and uh, and he's and, and the idea here is uh, that he, this kingdom age will be humongous. It will be huge. And uh, and he will rule and reign. Those who, verse 9, who dwell in the wilderness will bow before him. And his enemies will lick the dust. The kings of Tarshish uh, and of the isles will bring presents. The kings of Sheba and Seba will offer gifts. Yes, all kings shall fall down before him. All nations shall serve him. So this idea of just really the uttermost parts of the earth. Uh, Tarshish is in that area of Spain. You remember, uh, was it, um, I think it was Jonah was trying to flee from the presence of the Lord. And he wanted to get on a boat to go to Tarshish. So, I mean, the idea here is that, that, the, that the king will have... Um, he will reign the entire earth over the entire earth and uh, everyone will bow down to him and they shall serve him. He, verse 12, for he 
will deliver the needy when he cries. The poor also, and, and him who has no helper, he will spare the poor and needy. He will redeem their life from oppression and violence, and precious shall be their blood in his sight. What's beautiful about this, and this applies to us all, even today, is that God is concerned for the needy. But the needy needs to cry out. Acknowledge the Lord. Acknowledge that he is all powerful and he is all wise and he can help you. And so, and he will deliver the poor. Someone who has doesn't have the ability to uh, buy himself out of a problem, right? He has no money. He can't do anything. He has to completely trust in the Lord. All the poor, uh, he, is a, he is a helper um, to those poor. He will spare the poor and the needy and save the souls of the needy. But then I thought it was really interesting here in the end of verse 14. Precious, precious shall be their blood in his sight. I was thinking of our study in Revelation and how the chapter six and seven both speak of these martyrs. Uh, chapter six, under the altar, and chapter seven, uh, the ones that have been taken out of the, the great tribulation and they're given white robes. And these people are precious to the Lord. The idea of them being so close uh, to the Lord always and to serve him forever. Uh, and here, you know, this idea of a person laying his life down for the for the testimony of Jesus Christ. It's an incredible thing. And you say, oh, that's too bad. Their life was cut short. Was it really necessary? God is going to make it up to them in heaven. And I think that's really neat. It's precious uh, shall be their blood. Verse 15, and he shall live and the gold of Sheba will be given to him. Prayer will be made to him for him continually and daily. He shall be praised. Finances, <laughs> uh, uh, prayer and praise all go to this king. Uh, and there shall be, verse 16, an abundance of grain in the earth on the top of the mountains. Its fruit shall wave like Lebanon and those of the city shall flourish like grass of the earth, and his, he sh his name shall endure forever. His name shall be, uh, shall continue as long as the sun, the, and men shall be blessed by him. All nations shall call him blessed. Uh, the idea here is, is that the whole earth is under the rule and reign of this good king, not a not a not one that's out for himself but he is out for the people he's out he's he wants to help the needy he he will be there forever he, he there's an abundance of food there um, and fruit and grain and and there's a flourishing uh upon the earth and he will endure forever and, and it's just really neat in verse 18 blessed be the lord god the god of israel who only does wondrous things and blessed be his glorious name forever. And let the whole earth be filled with his glory. Amen and amen. The prayers of David, the son of Jesse, are ended. And so that concludes the second book of Psalms. Um, and we will start, the next one will be book three in Psalm 73. And so I think as I think about this psalm uh, and uh consider it this morning I just want to really come to that place in my own life where I acknowledge that that I have been poor and I am poor and needy I need the Lord and uh, I need his righteousness I need his wisdom uh, I need the proper judgments on the things that I see during the day and uh, and I realize that he's there to help me with those things he you know just as David desired Solomon to walk in righteousness, uh, only Christ is truly the one that can do that perfectly. Uh, he was the meal offering, if you would, where he, uh, his life, his physical, tangible life was perfect, everything he did. And, uh, and he's been accepted by God the Father uh, and, and so I want to live my life through and in Jesus. And today I want to do that today. I want to acknowledge that it's Christ that gives me the righteousness. I live 
in him now, through him. The life which I now live, I live by faith in the Son of God. And praise his name forever. Amen? That's That will conclude today's Psalm of the Day. God bless you.